Hi, I'm Debbie Hazelton, a Beyond Quantum Healing practitioner, and I was asked to share about any of what might be the most important question that I've been asked most often about being a blind practitioner. I do happen to be blind in this life, totally blind in the physical sense, uh, and really, I am not asked about it much, although I do know there are many practitioners who would be absolutely uh, off the chart freaked out at the thought of doing what this work is without video. There are many who rely on video, and many people, most people, rely on video, uh, on visual. Uh, I happen to believe that vision is in the mind and that, in a way, I have a head start on living in the unseen, where I feel that most of what is happening in the higher realms and with spirit really is residing in the unseen. However, that being said, uh, before I approached Candace about this, and I did approach her at the time, not so much because I didn't think it was wise to do it, but because I couldn't access the ways in which discounts were available via Facebook. They just were all relying on visual kinds of things. And I was having a hard time doing that, so I got in touch with her. And I had already given thought to how I would handle things like if somebody suddenly went silent on me and or if I heard a crash and they had fallen off of the couch or something, uh, you know, if, if suddenly they weren't responding. I had already given thought to how I would handle some kinds of things like that with with phone numbers and, and um, but even more than that, I would not do a session without letting somebody know, just get to know them. I mean, it's right to me, it makes sense to have a time with anyone to make sure that it's a good fit. They have a right to know what they're getting into with the kind of practitioner they're going to trust and I have a right to know about why they want a session and who they are in many respects before we move into that. And so I think this is just a natural thing that anyone who is interacting with me, I'm, I mean, it's just going to be something that is clear. And if they want to work with me, then fine. If if they don't, I've never had anybody not work with me because of it. Uh, I've had people really appreciate, even over the years with hypnosis and counseling, uh, you know, appreciate the fact that I wasn't under their microscope or they weren't under my microscope, um, trusting me to hear nuances and tone of voice. Uh, it's really not been a problem. Uh, I do think, like I said, it's, it's fair that it would be discussed. And I do know other sighted practitioners who don't use video, who prefer not to. And I remember Candace telling me she knew of people that did hypnosis by phone. So, and I do too, and, and have for years. So I don't really think it's an issue unless it is for the particular practitioner or for a client. I think if a practitioner is used to doing video, I wouldn't encourage them to not do it just because I don't use video. I think we all need to use the tools and the ways in which we come to this work. And I choose to trust spirit, spirit guides, mine, and the guides of the people who come to me to help us move the whole teams that we all are working with and part of to help bring this work forward. So that is uh, really my answer. <laughs> Thank you.